you're gonna see me on a big screen. Okay. Hello everyone and welcome to Wowhead Weekly number 145. This week we've got a lot of things to talk about, patch 7.35 just hit, so uh, without further ado, I will introduce my lovely co-host, Perculia. You can hey everyone! Here. We have so much stuff going on to talk about this week with the patch that launched Tuesday on US and Wednesday for EU. Um, there's new leveling, all sorts of secrets being found, a lot of undocumented surprises, even some transmog news. Um, before we get into all the juicy details, if you're watching the show live, you can enter for 30 days of game time by typing in chat the keyword game time, two words, case does not matter. So yeah, yeah. let's uh, go, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Also, because I'm a, I'm not a not a super experienced host, I forgot to actually introduce myself. Uh, I am Annie, also known as Annie Fuchsia, and I uh, I'm a big fan of uh, World of Warcraft, and uh, here I am hosting this Wowhead Weekly Show for you. It is my third time doing this, and um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm really happy, really excited to what's uh, what we got to talk about today. So yeah, uh, uh, just as a reminder, if mm -hmm. um, you're like, oh, you know, I watched a while back, where's Panzer? She's focusing on non-Twitch things in 2018, but she may come back as a guest in the future. So we love her. We love all the work she's done for the show. Um, Bright Paw is here Bright as Paw. well. Yeah, <laughs> I see him. I was like, oh, I also want a kitty. I also want yeah. something, something cute <laughs> to likes, cuddle with. <laughs> yeah, he likes attention, and 735 is taking a lot of my attention, so oh, I let's bet. get into this show. Yeah, yeah 7.35 has, uh, has a lot of new things, a lot of changes to existing things, and uh, many updated new things as well. Uh, let's, let's just jump into it. Let's jump yeah. into it straight away. Uh, the first thing that we wanted to mention is, uh, here, I've got a picture of it right there. Attaching your authenticator to your account now gives you four new backpack slots. And I mean, you have nothing to lose, right? Why not right. make your account more safe? And in addition to, you know, the, the security perk of that, you also get four new backpack slots. Um, yeah. I was already using it, so I, I got it immediately. If you did not get it, you let me go back to the picture. You can see the little plus sign there at the top image. Uh, where it says increase backpack size and that will give you the prompt uh, and then send you to the website where you can uh, uh, where you can activate the authenticator uh, yeah. I, I mean there's I don't think there's any reason not to do it it's um, if you have your own computer that you normally play on uh, you don't have to authenticate it all the time you just do it once uh, and then it, it remembers your computer so uh, yeah, there's yeah. no reason. Plus, to do you it. um you get the core hound pet. Yes, um, you get the pet as puppy well. when you get that. So two benefits from that. Yeah. Um, I actually did it back when the pet was introduced. That's when I started doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess if that wasn't enough, if you don't like pets, now you can get a backpack. Um, yeah. so another thing which we'll talk about more in depth in the show, but just as a, just as a quick rundown of what you can get like doing this week is you can start leveling up a new character through the new zone leveling system. And um, there are different level bands that scale dynamically along with you. And that means that you don't have to leave a zone before you finish the story because the zone keeps leveling up with you up to certain points. Yeah, and, and that, that's, that's a really good thing because I remember that being one of the main reasons why I would just jump into dungeons instead because yeah. it's like, oh no, I've finished, you know, just a couple of quests, I've already out-leveled it, now I need to walk all the way to this other zone. No, I'm just going to do a dungeon instead. Now that's not a problem. So I think that's actually great for the health of uh, the leveling aspect of the game. Yeah. Um, we also got the... Um, the faction embassies in both Orgrimmar and Stormwind, so both for Horde and Alliance. Uh, we showed you guys a picture in the past. I'll repeat the picture in case you uh, don't remember it. So basically what you can do now live on the game uh, is to see whether you have unlocked the allied races or not. So you can see, uh, for example, in this case that it shows the achievement and being exalted with the Nightfallen. Uh, so now you can actually check it yourself in the game. Cool. Uh, so another thing which is uh, pretty interesting because we didn't know about this until the patch notes came out is that um, 
There is a faction-specific quest line in Silithus um, in the updated Wound in the World, but to start the faction-specific quest line, you must defeat Argus the Unmaker, and that also works in LFR. So you need to go do some reading in order to see the uh, totally revamped zone as well as start this quest line. Uh, there's also some things to collect for collectors to be happy about. Yeah. There is a little pet, Silithus. Uh, I believe it's called Silithus. Um, like the mini tank, something mini like tank? that? Yeah, I think it's a mini tank. Yeah, I mini was about tank. to say war tank, then I was like, no, that sounds a bit wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Silithus mini tank, and I got a screenshot of it as well. So you can see it there. I was hanging out in Ice Crown, and I was like, okay, let's take a little screenshot. It's looking cute, <laughs> so it's right there. So that's how it looks. And you can also uh, loot the Ogmot General, um, which uh, might be interesting for, or should, or is probably interesting for anyone who is interested in lore. Yeah, lots of tinfoil hat speculation where this ogre sees visions of evil shepherds and hope, you know, uh, cloaked hooded figures and mm -hmm. all sorts of mysterious things that tie in with the Ilganoth whispers. <laughs> I see people yeah. saying the Silithus pet is hideous and cute, question oh. mark. What? I, I thought it looked it pretty cute. cute. I, yeah. I think it's cute because it matches one of the Call of the Scarab mounts Ooh, and then yes. it matches one of the Hunter Tames, so you can have a little matching family. And look, look, there is a cute cat. He's going straight for Pepe. Oh! oh. And Mischief. Two of them down. <laughs> Bright Pot 2, Shelf 0. <laughs> All right. Is he gonna do more? No. What are you I, doing, baby? I think he's happy now. Was that good enough? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I heard there was a discussion about pets. I am cute. I am here. Yes. He just wanted to and remind us. Hey, I'm a pet too. I'm the cute one. <laughs> if you are new, if you're coming from Annie Stream, um, this is a cat that Panzer helped me rescue, and he would always play in the background with the show. But for some reason, he was very calm the last two weeks. So, um. The Wahoo stream is usually used to him doing something funny, but I guess this is his first appearance with Annie as the host. Um, He's still a bit and there's shy. A, yeah, there's still a little, there's a bright paw emote in um, Wowhead Discord and uh, Twitch um, in celebration of when he does something silly. So Isn't is there a Wowhead emote like right now in the Twitch? Yeah, chat? it's a little, it's a little purple cat because the bright paw in game was a purple cat. Oh, oh, I so, see. It. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah. I see it. Yeah. So whenever Brightpaw does something during the stream, we can all emote him, and then he'll keep doing it because oh. he likes. <laughs> can we get back to our? Yeah. Let, let's jump back into our. Sorry. Yeah. yeah sorry about that. Um, um, the next thing on the list of uh, new things that you can do this week is find the lost mail in Dalaran to start the new Postmaster questline, which uh, it gives you achievements, and does it give you anything else in achievements? Yeah, there's a male mental pet, there is the caddy's, uh, there's a Postmaster toy of caddy who is the NPC assistant and she summons a mailbox, and um, then there is the Postmaster title. Okay. Um, and the, the weird thing about this is that you need to uh, start the quest line from a piece of dropped mail in Dalaran, and that's on a timer. So um, at first it'll be very difficult to acquire the mail, and then as more and more people do the quest and get a mail to give to their friends, it will be like a butterfly effect, oh, yeah. and lots of people do it. So yeah, that if, you don't, me... if you don't have it Sorry. now, don't despair. You can get one in the future, hopefully easier. Yeah, I think that reminds us a lot about the... Um how the uh, the brawlers worked where like one person has exactly. an invitation and then they are able to give the invitation to a friend so uh yeah just like you said butterfly effects they will eventually become so common that no one will uh find too much trouble finding one i think at the moment i saw it on the auction house for like hundreds of thousands of gold <laughs> yeah just like wait a week or two yeah. weeks and more people will have it should get easier uh and uh the last sort of uh, bullet point of things uh, to talk about is also the selfie cam filters, which we'll show you. We'll show you examples of them a bit later on tonight. Yeah, if you also don't have the selfie camera and you don't want to deal with the garrison mission, there is a new quest line in Argamar and Stormwind to um, get the camera at a low level. And as mentioned, lots of cool things to share with the selfie camera later on uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we should also run down what is coming soon because, mm -hmm. you know, in Legion, it's not as if you get everything at once with a patch. It's all staggered out. Um, so the first thing which we hope, you know, we'll get Ulduar Time Walking likely on February 13th. 
and that will be part of Wrath Time Walking, and um, you'll be able to do all the bosses, get cool transmog, get some cool, like, I level 30-ish, 930-ish gear, so mm-hmm. um, that's cool with that. Oh, um, it's 930? Yeah. It's oh, that's pretty, pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, side note on Uldor, uh, from I haven't done it myself, so I guess I can't confirm 100%, but from what it sounds like from people who've been telling me, if you do run Uldor, like the, the regular raid, uh, the, uh, the, it actually drops both 10-man and 25-man loot in one. Uh, like, yeah. uh, you, you can get any loot by just uh, running it normally. So in a way, for transmog collectors, it's, it's better, because uh, in the past, you'd have to choose between 25 and 10-man, and then you'd have to... Uh, and then you get saved for the week. You can't do both of them in one, mm-hmm. in one go, because you get locked to both. So um, I, I think this is actually a, a, a good change for transmog farmers. Yeah, also if you like mounts or titles, because um, if you get the observed achievement now for Algalon, you get both the 10 and 25 titles. Um, but that can be that can be earned outside of time walking. Um, mm-hmm. Just, you know, time walking is a way to get more badges um, mm-hmm. and get cool loot. Mm-hmm. Um, and all, all, the time, come- all the time walking yeah. mounts as well, in case you haven't collected those oh, yet. Oh, yeah. The Iron Bound Wrath Charger is what you can get um, when the Wrath Vendor is up. It's like a cool Death Knight pony thing. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that's coming is the Seething Shore Battleground. This ties into the Silitha story. Um, so, uh, you know, we're talking about both factions knowing about Azerite, and then things will heat up and they'll start fighting over the Azerite uh, more. Um, we don't mm-hmm. know when that's coming, though. We don't have any hard date on that. Do we have any speculation? Um, my guess... I, I have no idea. My guess is maybe if they have a PvP Season 7, you know, hype with the new season, need a, I don't know, far more honor, people might be doing it then. But okay. we don't know when the new season is. Okay, fair uh, enough. Yeah. Um, then, as we mentioned um, a few weeks back, there's an artifact weapon cutscene coming. Mm-hmm. Um, I imagine that would be... I, I don't know when that is. My guess is maybe in a few weeks, because the Silitha story is very incomplete. Um... But, you know, we'll get that cutscene. We showed you an early version of that a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trial of Style is coming early March. There are new sets you can buy. You can actually buy them now, but, you know, no one really has tokens saved up. Um, and then, oh, this is a cool thing you want to share. Do you want to show and talk about? The yes. Cool, yeah, you the can pictures. show this one. Uh, yeah. Let me find it right there. So we got yeah. the... Uh, the new flower crowns that were they were data mined a while ago right before we knew what they were for yeah it was like, and then I don't know, over the summer really long time yeah so there were a lot of questions about what they are and then we confirmed that they were part of the lunar festival and uh, now we are getting closer to the lunar festival actually being in the game yeah. so these are the different things that you can transmog into is, is it going to be the same or similar to the other events where you can only transmog them during the event uh, we're not we're not sure honestly. Um, I feel like people would be sad. They they have no requires X in the tooltip, so I think okay. maybe hopefully it's year round. But um, you know nothing is set in stone until um, someone finally gets it on live servers. The patch notes just said that new like festive crowns were coming for yeah. uh, this event. So uh, yeah. and also the uh, the new event uh, called the Scarab Lord Holiday. Oh yeah. That is uh, coming uh, this weekend? Yeah, it's the 21st through 23rd. Yes. So that's also coming in a few days. And it looks like there might even be temporary mounts as part of it. A blue one for the Alliance and a red one for the Horde. And that that we know only works during the holiday. Mm-hmm. So we don't know how we get them, but, um, you know, it's a nice touch that... Um, you can see more bug mounts running around. And we actually have some more news about the bug mounts we'll get to later in the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, I see some questions here and there. If you do have any questions, uh, make sure you tag Sass so he does not miss them. So Sass148, and he will uh, uh, send the questions over to us. Yeah, if there's any, we can address a few questions before we move on to discussing the cinematics because that's kind of spoilery, so it might be a good transition point. Oh, that's actually a good point. Yeah. Uh, I, I noticed a question here about whether the uh, items from the first Trial of Cell will still be available for this sort of 2.0 Trial of Cell. Yeah, they actually, um, all the transmogrifiers, um, there's an option to transmog and then there's an option to buy items and they are selling all of the season one and two items as well as the fashionable shirt from last time. So okay. if you had, if you had them, if you had all the tokens saved up, you could buy season one and two mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. And, okay. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm scrolling fast to see if there was any other yeah. specific question to this. Um, uh, <laughs> quick question. Do those flower <laughs> crowns require watering? <laughs> I don't think you'll have to water your crowns. I think they'll just live forever. And also, uh, we got another gifted sub. So thank oh, you awesome. about thank that. Skipper TV was gifted a sub. I missed who it was who gifted it. But thank you very much for supporting the channel. Actually, I see it now. It was Lincoln. It was Lincoln. <laughs> oh, that's that's sweet. So uh, Smelly uh, gifted a sub to Lincoln, who gifted a sub to Skibba. So it's like a chain. Oh, <laughs> yay. That is really sweet. Thank you, sweet. guys. Thank you, guys. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, th I think we could go on to the Legion cinematics. Yeah. Uh, you see cinematics, yes. Um, this is my favorite part of the show. Yeah, let's go. I was skimming through the questions fast, but I think we're good to go. Yeah. So uh, let's get started. These yeah. these videos or these cinematics actually got me really excited. As soon as I did the first, uh, I, so I play Alliance. I watched the Alliance one and then I was like, okay, guys, link me the Horde one. I need to watch it. <laughs> but yeah, let's right. uh, go here. Like many of you, I know firsthand the pain of loss. My father, King Varian Rin, gave his life to save his people. He knew that no one, not even a king, is more important than the Alliance. And because he and so many others had the courage to make that sacrifice. We did the impossible. We defeated the Burning Legion. Spymaster Shaw. Back so soon? But by living our lives, our joy. I need to speak with him. These are the gifts of the fallen. Now. And we must cherish and celebrate them for the Alliance! We've observed an unusually large cluster of goblins in Silithus. And the numbers are increasing. Goblins aren't the most charming people, but they do things for a reason. And those reasons usually involve money. So, the Horde has found something valuable then. They have indeed. This. seen the horde does and we must find out more agreed we have eyes on it okay and then i'll jump straight into the horde one as well there we go. War Chief, if I may offer a few words. It is with both pain and pride that we gather here today. Pain for many brave heroes of the Horde fell against a terrible foe. And pride for against all odds, we have vanquished the Legion! We bled, now we heal. We mourned, now we celebrate! For the Horde! For the Horde! War Chief! A moment of your time. No doubt Gallywix wants to push his latest money-grubbing scheme. 
rats scurry about their business and get eaten if they're not careful. <laughs> Keep sending more goblins to Silithus. <laughs> Nothing good has ever come out of Silithus. This will change everything. <laughs> I told you! And the Alliance knows nothing of this. Don't worry, War Chief. I got people on it. Apparently I'm muted. Sorry, guys. Oh. <laughs> uh, there we go. Welcome but yeah, back. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, th those were the cinematics uh, for Alliance and for Horde. Uh, the Alliance one is um, uh, introducing at the end the idea or question marks about Ezraite. And with the Horde ones, we see a little bit more of what's going on. Uh, I think it's the case with... Uh, both of them that they may not know that they may not exactly know what it is. Uh, there were a few things that we were um, discussing about this as well, where both um, we felt like the Azerite might actually be affecting the people who are near it or uh, or touching it um, by yeah yeah like if you when they when they come in contact with it. So yeah. also, why are they holding with their bare hands? Like, it yeah. seems very dangerous. <laughs> yeah, when it's um, a nuke type of like material, would you just put it in your hand straight, especially the shining that strongly? Yeah. Like you could even see it from outside the um, those curtains uh, when Sylvanas and Galloix were inside. Like it, it's really bright. It's really strong. Yeah. But yeah, they both have these really strong reactions to the Azerite and uh, almost like they're possessed by it and their voices get really eerie and there are these cool kind of echoey sound effects um especially mm -hmm. the end when one is really pronounced like you hear a whisper in the background and um they both sound really greedy and Anduin before this is talking about the speech about you know triumph and honor and then sylvanas is totally bored at the table yeah. and then they get really <laughs> excited about um azurite yeah. so there's still a lot of questions like who who tipped galliwix off that the azurite was in Silithus, and why is no one caring about the sword? Why is everyone just caring about the Azerite? Um, you'd think they'd be wanting to rebuild the zone or deal with it, but they seem to be uncaring except when people find Azerite. Yeah, especially with, uh, we, we saw that with, um, well, for I guess for Anduin, we see like a sort of, um, almost like uh, possibly uh, greed or something in the eyes yeah. of, of mm -hmm. when, when he comes in contact with it. So that that's the, um, I guess, contrast uh, between the like the speech that he held and seeing yeah. it as right. And with Sylvanas, how, yeah, how she seemed to be really bored. Like when Bane is uh, yeah. speaking and when they're sort of, you know, having a somewhat celebratory dinner and she's just sitting there like super bored and then she sees it and she suddenly looks alive again, you know? Yeah, I mean, we could speculate that maybe she thinks this is a life-giving magical material and she could use it for her Forsaken yeah. plan to, you know, have immortality, which she failed at in Stormheim. Um, but it's it's definitely very interesting how she just suddenly comes to life. Um, we also wanted to talk a little about the contrast in the two cinematics and what that meant for maybe the Alliance and Horde with their leadership. Um so, like, you know, the Alliance is obviously Anduin in front of a large crowd in Stormwind, but you don't really see the faction leaders. And the Horde, you don't have the crowd, but you see all the faction leaders trying to celebrate together, even if they don't really um, like each other. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, Anduin is talking so much in the cinematic, and Sylvanas is totally quiet until she sees Gallywix. 
And it's like she doesn't even care when Bane does his tribute speech, and she doesn't even um, toast or cheer when he ends the speech and they all say, for the Horde. Yeah. Um, and we learned in the Before the Storm novel that was shown at BlizzCon that the first chapter opens when basically Bane and Saurfang are forcing Sylvanas to finally have a parade in the city. Um, mm -hmm. So they're kind of picking up that she's not really a motivational leader. And then in the book, we also learn that Sylvanas feels uncomfortable and she would prefer to be more in the shadows as a leader doing more subtle power plays and not in this front and center role as war chief trying to make the orcs and the tauren and everyone else you know feel special and valued yeah she she seems like she's um she's her or like her biggest interest is uh to work for or to uh help the forsaken and it's like as if she she's not really sure about her role as a war chief and i mean she did become that because of uh um like that, that view yes yeah Volgen uh, was like the hey, view that he had like you I know it's her yeah. yeah so uh she kind of didn't really have a real choice yeah i also wanted to touch quickly on the scout at the end um i know there's been some speculation sorry i went off script a little but i just realized that uh when at the end there is that um si7 um female that has the eagle that gets the azurite and I think there's been some speculation um, if that could be the wounded um, blue and gold figure in the concept art for the burning of Teldrassil, but I don't think it's the same figure because in the concept art, the character clearly has elf ears. Yeah, um, I noticed so that as well. It's probably just like a random but cool SI7 agent and not like Alaria or Barisa or I don't know, some other elf. <laughs> Uh, I don't think we need a spoiler tag because we're just discussing the things that we can see. Um, yeah. So, uh, or like the things that have happened. Um, there, there's no like new content that is uh, saying these things that has been data mined. So it, it's okay. We're safe. We're safe. Yeah, we're no, not no doing spoiler tag. Like, no, no PTR in this show. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're good. We're safe. Yeah. Anything else you wanted to bring up with uh, this before the next segment? I feel like there's so many little um, details. That yeah. We could just go down rabbit holes on. Uh, I think I think we covered the the main parts that I wanted to talk about. Uh, yeah, I had two quick things. So apparently, people like Galley Wicks's little do 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 do. Oh yeah. And uh, the uh, guy who voices over Reinhardt, Darren DePaul, um, is Galley Wicks, and he improvised that, and they thought it was really cool, so they kept that in. Yeah, and, I read about that too. Uh, also, Christy Golden worked with uh, Taryn Gregory on the cinematic, which is really cool because she's the author of Before the Storm, which is the Battle for Azeroth novel coming up, so I think it's interesting how she was able to weave her story into these cinematics, and we could kind of view the cinematics as like a little prequel to um, the story. So, really well done. I'm really excited to see what comes next with the story, because it's clear that the Silitha story is not yet um, complete by any means. It's just starting with the faction conflict. I saw also a couple people mention or comment uh, Gallowick's model update. Uh, we, we do have a picture of that coming up in, in the show. Uh, but I it, that's something that I like also like really felt in that cinematic. It, it, it looks really good. It, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome when they make new models uh, or new updates for models like that. Yeah. But yeah, so I think we can uh, go on to the next topic, the topic of uh, the leveling changes that we mentioned briefly at the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. So the way that it works now is that all zones and normal dungeons now scale to your level up to uh, a certain cap. So for example, for classic, we have level one being capped up to 60. We have TBC slash Northrend uh, go from 58 to 80. Catamus and Pandaria, 80-90. Uh, Wad 90 to 110 and Legion 98 to 110, which was, it was kind of already like that. Um, yeah. And uh, so something interesting that we noticed, and other people have been mentioning this as well, is that heroic dungeons do not seem to scale. I noticed this when I was transmog farming in old TBC dungeons, and I noticed that the normal, um, the normal version, the normal drops was higher item level than my heroic drops. And I found that really strange. And then, Perk, you were talking about how it's uh, similar yeah. <laughs> with the HPs of the different mobs as well, or like the yeah. bosses. Yeah, so people on Reddit were noticing, they're like, oh, it must be reversed. And that's because um, 
uh, Burning Crusade normal scales up to 80, but Burning Crusade Heroic is stuck at 70. And then yeah. Kata Heroic scales up to 90. Kata normal scales up to 90, but Heroic stuck at 85. So if you're farming, you know, Slab Hide for the mount, um, it might be better to do it on, on Heroic. Um, and I also noticed this, I was looking at the loot, I was trying to, you know, look at data mining and wowhead values, and I was super confused why all the heroic loot was at a lower item level than normal, and that's because, like, oh, the heroic loot is just stuck at 70 while you can have level 80 values for the normal stuff. So it's a little counterintuitive, but maybe as more people know about, know about this and document, it won't be the biggest deal in the world. Like, it's not really mandatory to do heroic dungeons while leveling. Um, mm -hmm. But it is strange if you are farming old dungeons for transmog or yeah. mounts or any other pets. And as a side note for any transmog farmers out there, uh, something I noticed uh, is that if you run the normal modes of the of the Team C dungeons, for example, uh, I assume it'll be similar with all of them. I was specifically going for TBC this day. Um, I noticed that the heroic loot was dropping in normal mode as well. So um, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, dungeons when you have to go for the heroic loot, you can only go for it once a day. But with this change, that means that you could uh, actually be uh, farming the normal mode over and over again and get the heroic loot, which is pretty interesting. Um, makes it possible to actually spam it and get it ASAP instead of having to do it once a day. Yeah, that's that's kind of a welcome change. Yeah. Um, another good change is that the lore master achievements are now go by a completion of major stories as opposed to having to do every single quest in the zone, including totally random, unrelated kind of throwaway quests. Yeah. So it should be a little easier to do, and I think it just makes more sense thematically to focus on the lore of the zone as opposed to scouring for, you know, oh, I'll go, I need to find the outhouse to pick up the, the poop quest, you know, just get my number done type thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, so for me, uh, I had done Lore Master when, uh, well, a long time ago. And I think the way it was before was that it would be a number of quests, right? Like it would yeah, say like West a very Fall. high number of quests. Yeah, yeah like, like, yeah, exactly. It would be like a specific number of quests. And from all my achievements, I actually uh, lost the... The wetlands one on my warlock. Oh wow! Uh, because apparently I did not complete one of the storylines out of four of them. So I must have reached the correct number by doing the number of quests necessary, but I did not complete that specific storyline. So if you do, if you did notice that you've lost some achievement points, it, it is worth uh, making sure that you still have all of your lore master achievements. Yeah. Um, there are a few more other things. Um, heirlooms are slightly nerfed at lower levels. This does not nerf the experience, but your stats might be slightly lower. Um, it's not the end of the world. Um, this one has caused some more commotion. We'll get to it more in the future, but mob hit points are up in the outdoor world, and in some cases, they're up too much in some raids and dungeons, which might be fixed soon. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it does take you longer to kill things because things have more HP. Mm -hmm. And this next one is um, pretty useful. You don't need extra flying training to fly in Cataclysm uh, Northrend or Pandaria zones because all those special things like Wisdom of the Four Winds have been removed, so you just need expert writing and then you can fly everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's more, I guess, kind of like a convenience change. Uh, it wasn't a big deal to get most of these. I think they were just all purchasable by gold. Yeah, uh, so I guess if you don't have gold, you can save yeah. gold. Yeah, so yeah. it's alts after all and uh, old content, so uh, yeah, no big deal. Uh, we also have, um, um, I think that was it for leveling changes for now. Yeah, I mean, we'll go into some bugs with leveling mm -hmm. um, later on and some like transmog changes as a result of leveling, but I think that's pretty much you know the TLDR of leveling um, in a nutshell. Yeah, so. Yeah, so now we have some... like with ahead, yeah. yeah, sorry. <laughs> like yeah. with uh, any kind of patch or change, sometimes uh, there is uh, additional changes, uh, direct or indirect, um, that may not have been mentioned in the uh, official post, and we wanted to go through them now. So, for example, this might make uh, reputation farmers happy, yeah. uh, especially with the allied races that need unlocking. Uh, we have Argus Elite World Quests that now give rep with Army of the Light and Argassian Reach. So uh, instead of just giving one or the other, now you get reputation for both. And the two weekly quests also give 1000 rep with both factions as well. Um, and I, I believe it used to be 250 before. 
Yeah, you know, it was only for one. So I for think Fuel of the Doom World was only with Argusian Reach, and then Invasion mm-hmm. was only with Army of the Light. So mm-hmm. you're going from 250 per week to 2,000 per week with both factions. So yeah. that, that's a that's a huge game. Yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you were working on your allied races, uh, this will be really good news for you. So uh, especially with Argusian Reach, a lot of people were saying that it's really mm-hmm. slow to farm it. So. Uh, that's some good news for the reputation yeah. farmers out there. Yeah. Uh, another fun little, or well, fun if you happen to be one of them. Controversial so fun. <laughs> controversial fun. Uh, the Black Kiraji War Tank Mount is now a new mount for the old Scarab Lords. Um, I've got a picture here to show you guys. There. So. This mount is an additional mount uh, for people who have the Scarab Lord title or the the achievement. Uh, so it's not. Some people were thinking that maybe it's a, it's a, um, a replacement of the old mount. It is not. Uh, the reason why people thought that it's maybe a replacement is because it's actually uh, the same mount but an updated. Um, skin for is would that be the right word yeah to like high, high resolution yeah the um, high resolution skin, version yeah. of it yeah so it's a higher resolution uh, version of the old mount in case you have forgotten or not sure how the old mount looks this is it so it's still a sort of like purple blackish mount uh just uh, just making it more on par with uh you know today's t- standards of how uh, resolution and things look in the game so uh if you are a scarab lord you can be happy to get an additional mount. If you're not, then you can uh, be not happy that they get a bonus mount. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that that's what it that's what that this, is. This probably did not take Blizzard a lot of time to implement because yeah. I know some people are like, oh, like why did Blizzard make you know a hundred people a brand new mount? Um, but this is the same model Mod- that yeah. is used for that pet um, mini tank we saw for mm-hmm. new hunter teams for rare spawns and Silithus, for Call of the Scarab mounts. And, you know, they already had these models lying around, so it's very easy once it's created for a bunch of other things just to mm-hmm. slap it on um, onto a mount. And um, who knows, maybe we'll get some of those old hardcore players to log on with the promise of a free mount and they can hype people up around them. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, I started playing back in Classic, and I was not advanced enough to have a chance at getting the Resonating Crystal, but... Mm-hmm. Um, Seeing people do that really inspired me to get more um, into WoW. So, you know, as someone that if they maybe worked harder could have been competing for that, I'm I'm not not salty that I don't have it. I'm I'm fine with (laughs) other people who play during Classic having the mount. When I was initially told that Scarab Wars are getting an additional mount, I was... uh... I was not happy. I was like, they already have a super unique, or like their own, maybe not super unique, but they they, they do have their own mount. Why do they need a second one? Uh, but it makes total sense when I actually read about it. Of course, I, I feel like they, I don't know, deserve is a strong word, but I think like they, uh, they, they do deserve an updated version of it to make it more on par with, you know, today's transmogs and how, how today's... Um, outside um, environments look like and everything you know instead of yeah. two pixels they have a few more pixels I think exactly. it makes sense and someone mentioned it doesn't have any armor plates uh, like Perculia mentioned it's a model that they already had I don't think they made additional uh, work on it such as armor on it uh, because it would not be um, uh, it would not be a super worthwhile invest uh, yeah. investment into something that so such a f- like small population uh, can actually even make use of so, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's okay that they get an updated version of it. Yeah. So we're both mount, collector, co- we're both mount collectors and yeah. we think it's, you know, it's cool. Yeah, I, I think it's all right. I, I was upset at first, I'll admit, but then when I, when I realized it's an updated version of the existing one, I, I think it's all right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so another undocumented changes of note that you may have noticed in the uh, Legion cinematic that we mentioned earlier uh, is the updated uh, models of Bane, Galax, Sarfang, and Nathanos. Let me get the picture out for you. I believe it's here. Yes. There we go. Oh, and perfect timing. Galax is now showing. You notice... Yeah. Okay, now he's not showing. <laughs> but you can <laughs> notice that his... Um, what's it called? His cane? It's a, yeah, his it's a cane, cane, right? Scepter. Yes. Yes, yeah. his cane now, uh, the top of his cane actually has Azerite instead of like a, um, 
um, a bowl of whatever it used to be, uh, which is a nice um, uh, showing of what the current uh, current happenings in the game is, which is uh, which is an awesome update. There it is again. There you can see it, the blue and yellow. Did you want to add anything to that? No, I mean, just uh, I think it's really cool. I know they don't really add a lot of, you know, breaking news to the game and systems, but I think it's nice when Blizzard keeps updating the world mm -hmm. around them with, with very very visible leaders, and I think that mm -hmm. the cane is especially a, a nice touch. Yeah, definitely. So. so um, just letting yeah. a few images slide more in case anyone missed anything. There we go. Back to Gallowix. Okay. Well, um, another topic for today that may interest a lot of people is the little Una. Aww, Let me get her picture. So sad. Yeah. Um, for some of you guys who may have been pet collectors, you may have uh, already had, the, had this pet since a while ago. Um, the drop rate of it was used to be pretty rare. Um, it drops from the, uh, what's it called? The mini-faced... Devourer. Yeah. Yes. Many face devourer. Yes. I remember farming for this and it was pretty, pretty rare. It took some time to get it. But now, uh, as there's some more things that's unveiling about Una, uh, they have actually increased the drop rate because you need Una uh, or you need the pet in order to um, unlock something. We're not really sure what we're unlocking, but yeah. yeah. Do you want to go into it? Yeah, sure, you have yeah. a little bit more insight into this. I'll All show right. a picture of Una in the meantime. Yeah. Oh, this, this quest line is so sad. So she obviously has a dark backstory because you, you know, get her spirit from a Urzul monster. Um, and in the patch, um, we data mined um, dialogue implying that she starts talking to you and is swallowed by the darkness, but sometimes is having fun traveling around the world. So, um... It turns out that the secret is that you can take her to different places around the world and she says different things and picks up different objects like you find her stuffed animal or her wand and then and eventually leads into a scenario in the Shadowlands. And then you apparently do something in the scenario, we don't know what yet, and then Una is happy. And it's really interesting because nobody knows what the reward is or if there even is a reward, it's just people want to, you know, save Una um, and have her be happy. So the Secret Finding Discord has been searching through all of the clues and they've taken Una to a bunch of places and now they're trying to find out how to get to the Shadowlands for her scenario. And what I think is really cool is that a lot of the hints came from um, just data mining dialogue, like, you know, Una talks about wanting a crown or a stuffed animal or something else and uh, that served as a hint um, for people to figure that out. So I wonder what the reward is. I think it might even be cool if there was no reward and Una was just at peace and happy and not, you know, tortured between, you know, um, our world and um, death. I think that having the child be happy would be interesting and maybe people just want to solve it for the fun of solving something instead of needing a cool reward at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I've been checking the um, secret finding discord and uh, no progress since the start of the show, but we have some sticky comments on Wowhead or you can check out the um, secret progress channel on secret finding to see what they have found and the dialogue that has not been um, triggered yet by having Una run around. So stay tuned later for a guide when it's solved. And I really love content like this. Mm, and, definitely. Uh, Jeremy Fiesel, a.k.a. Muffinist, was even tweeting that he wrote the dialogue for this and it was very difficult to write at points because, you know, talking about a child that is in distress, um, you know, it was, it was very rough for him uh, to do so. Um, so it's a very touching, sad yeah. quest line. I hope at the end she's happy. Um, yeah, I hope after, so too. Yeah, like apparently she disappears before the Shadowlands, like she's consumed by darkness. So it's like, oh no. Oh. <laughs> so we need to go take her from that place and find out where it is. Yeah, I, again, shout out to Secret Finding Discord for always helping us solve these things together by getting people with the similar interests together and putting clues together. And uh, I mean, like you said, you said that they they were using the data mine dialogues, right? So that was yeah. in a way thanks to the things that you actually found. So 
it's like e- everyone working together it's it's awesome yeah. it's awesome um, but yeah i i'm looking forward to seeing what this actually will mean um i uh, I, I heard a lot of things about like, oh, like, yeah, there's some secrets to do with Una. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? What's going on? Uh, we don't know what's going on. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. But you know there's a secret. Yes. And I'm like, yeah. okay. <laughs> we want to make Una happy. Like, this yeah. is just for the, you know, it's not about the glory. It's about cheering her up. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think even that would be nice as a reward, even if we don't get anything else. Yeah. Um, okay. So- uh, moving on from Una, we've got some transmog updates. Uh, I just noticed Food Animal just described, so thank you for that. If I missed other people, I'm sorry, but uh, I, I saw this one, so I thought I might as well em- I yeah. might as well mention it right before we delve into this. Uh, so there's been some changes to uh, rules of when you can transmog into different gear. And uh, it, if you look at the level ranges, it actually reminds you exactly uh, of how the level ranges are working in the uh, zones for questing and also the dungeons. So for level one, for example, you can actually transmog to appearances found on gear requiring up to level 60. So that's basically the full classic experience. You can level, I mean, you can transmog anything up to level 60 on a level one character, uh, even yeah. a bank alt, for example. I know a lot of yeah. people keep bank alts. Um, usually what they give those characters is like a dress if it's a woman or if it's a female and um, like the, uh, the the suit. Tuxedo. Uh, the, the tuxedo yeah. suit if you're a male. Now you can even transmog them into fancy things such as i've got some i was playing around in the dressing room on the wowhead website and got these together so this is the tier three oops i just moved that this is the tier three uh paladin set on a human and the tier two i believe netherwind is tier two right yeah tier two mage tier two mage set on uh well, now it's a Void Elf. There's a slideshow going on. But there we go. So it's on the human as well. Uh, so you can see how a level one can walk around looking like this. And that's 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 pretty cool. So now your bank alts can look even more fancy than they are. And with the other numbers, uh, to, to just repeat in case you forgot, or if you don't remember how the zones and the dungeons worked, uh, for level 58, you can transmog to appearances found on gear requiring up to level 80. And for level 80, you can transmog up to level 90 gear. For level 90, you can transmog up to 100. And from 98, uh, you can transmog up to gear of 110. This should be really fun for allied races because they're going to start at level 20 and you can get them some pretty sweet gear as soon as they start off. So you can have your allied race running around in, for example, tier three um, before they even get their cool heritage armor. So Mm -hmm. I think that's neat. And in this picture here, the left one is actually light forged Draenei and the right one is actually a void elf. So you can see how they can look like. And you can plan your outfits in Wowhead's uh, dressing room, and you can even save them, and you can try out gear on allied races right now. Yeah. So, yeah. Played around comes up with full sets. Yeah, I, I was just testing out different sets and uh, took screenshots of the ones I liked, and I wanted to show you guys some of them. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, in fashion news, we have another <laughs> cool yeah. discovery. Um, do you want to bring up the slideshow for yes. that? Yes, I'll right. bring it up right now. Maybe it's... Uh, I, I can talk about it as well since I can see the yeah, picture. Yeah. Uh, so let me wait for the next one so I don't get interrupted in the middle of the slideshow. Uh, there we go. Okay, so this one, you can see the Argus filter. and um, Or let me first introduce the topic. I always get ahead of myself. Okay, so Selfie, Selfie Cam. cam. <laughs> Selfie yeah. Cam is a uh, toy. Uh, that you can get in the game and uh, previously i think there were only two or three filters or yeah it was just like very very standardized things. yeah yeah very basic uh, filters and now uh, what we have are additional five additional filters which have been introduced and they can be unlocked in different ways and i'll go through them right now as we look at the um the picture um for the specific ones. So for example, here we have the Twilight filter, and this one is obtained by taking a selfie with Cho'Gal in the Bastion of Twilight. Um, The next one here, I think I can hear a helicopter or something. Yeah, that's that's (laughs) me. There's like some sort of 
face nearby. Okay. <laughs> it's a little strange. Yeah. No worries. We missed Argus. It's okay. We'll talk about Argus soon. Yeah. This one is the Firelands one, Firelands filter, and you can be learned by taking a selfie with Ragnaros in Firelands. Uh, this one is Frostmourn. You get this selfie by taking a selfie with the Lich King. Uh, apparently for this one you have to be in combat to actually get credit, so you can try and keep that in mind. Um, and this one is the Shao filter, and you acquire this one uh, by taking a selfie with Shao Fear in the Terrace of Endless Spring. And the same thing here was that you had to be in combat to get credit. Uh, I'm not sure if that was a bug or intended. Um, yeah, I think there's been some comments on Wowhead saying, oh, maybe they fixed it, um, but yeah, it might be they're fixed. all low level, so it should be trivial to, you know, yeah. get either way. Oh, Argus maybe is back. Argus. Yeah. So for Argus filter, <laughs> you need to take a selfie with Argus to unmake it in Taurus. And that covers all the five different filters. So if you want to play around with uh, a bit more interesting filters with your selfie cam, uh, that is now possible with those filters. Yeah. Um, and just as a reminder, because we're on our last topic in the notes, we still mm -hmm. have a giveaway uh, going on, which is um, 30 days of game time, and you enter by typing in the word game and then the word time as two separate words. Mm -hmm. And we will be picking the winner after we cover our final topic, which is really fun on extended maintenance and bugs. Yes. Uh, actually, one another another note okay. on the giveaway. Uh, I think I saw Sass write that uh, subscribers actually have uh, two times the chance to win. Ooh. So uh, a little bonus for people who are taking the additional step of subscribing in terms of supporting. So yeah, right. uh, yes, extended maintenance and bugs. Do you, do you want to take that perk? All right, so um, there is extended maintenance scheduled for Friday the 19th on US Realms and um, Saturday the 20th on EU Realms. And this is going to last for eight hours. Um, so. Mm -hmm. We think this is because there are some pretty big issues, um, like huge FPS problems in raids, as well as Mr. Pandaria and Warlord's um, uh, mobs. They have like very high health, and it's like nearly impossible to solo, and Blizzard has said that's not intended. So we think that they need to do some pretty massive changes that they just can't hotfix in. Because, you know, mm -hmm. they always, like, they are really good about not having extended maintenance. Um, so it so must be a pretty, pretty big deal, yeah. Yeah, um, so I think it will address those two topics. Um, and if you don't know what the um, Warlords and Raids uh, scaling issues are, um, basically um, they are like two or three or even four times as have, they even have like so much more HP than they used to. And we have a post covering the values in Hellfire Citadel. So Manoroth before 735 had 198 million and after 735 had 380 million. Yeah. Uh, so it makes things more difficult um, to solo, and Blizzard has says, we want to be clear, our intention was never to greatly increase the difficulty of soloing old raid content for transmog or mount runs, but a side effect of the creature health tuning we did for leveling players. We're currently mm -hmm. working on a fix that will significantly reduce the health of warlords and miss raid bosses. So yeah. um, that should solve that. As we mm -hmm. mentioned before, there was some weirdness with heroic and normal mobs in dungeons. We're not sure if this fix will affect that because as we mentioned, it's intended that normal um, HP and loot scales up, but the heroic bosses do not. So maybe it's intended that at certain level ranges, normal could be a little higher than heroic. I um, wonder if the loot drops is intended as well. So what I mentioned earlier on, uh, in case you just tuned in, uh, was I noticed that when I was running my Trainsmog runs on normal mode, I was getting loot drops from the heroic loot table, and um, I was uh, wondering if that's if that's a bug or if it's intended. I guess we'll see after this fix, uh, because like you said, it, it's a really long maintenance one for uh, on like not a regular maintenance day. Right. So um, that's uh, that that usually means it's a big deal. Um, and I think we all kind of felt it because the uh, the U.S. realms were down for so long, even on the Wednesday, uh, mm -hmm. which is they not that common. Too. Yeah, yeah, there's loads of extensions and everything. Um, so it seems like there's something complicated going on on the tech side of things. So uh, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what kind As of things. As a side note, speaking of maintenance and notices, um, mm -hmm. we only knew that 735 was coming um, a day before and I was speculating pretty heavy on it because when I saw the extended maintenance notice for Tuesday, I'm going, 
we have extended maintenance, but we don't know that 735 is announced yet. So yeah. uh, it's been pretty, pretty a uh, crazy intense scramble to get all the guides and loot and double checking all the facts in order uh, on Wildhead because you know we're just sort of in the dark about some of this stuff when it comes yeah. out. <laughs> Uh, someone um, mentioned in the chat, and uh, yeah, so what I noticed as well was, uh, so I was uh, I was streaming uh, World of Warcraft, and uh, I play on EU, uh, we hit 3 a.m., servers went down, and I was like, okay, well, I guess we're going to have an extended maintenance as well, you know, just like, th just like the horde, I was about to say, just like, uh, just like the Americans, so... Um, Let's let's switch game then. And I started playing Zelda, and like half an hour into that, people were like, "Oh, the servers are up again." And I was like, "What do you mean they're up again?" Yeah, you just have to like right click and manually update, and then it's done. You just log in, and I, I couldn't believe it. Like that was, I, I guess, whatever they were struggling with uh, in the U.S. was like um, immediately like turned over to the like the EU people as well, so that the yeah. EU didn't have to uh, wait for so long. I thought oh. that was yeah I yeah I almost referred to the Americans as horde. <laughs> yeah, I, I did not. Mean I don't that. know about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was um it was an honest mistake. Um, before I get into some of the questions that SAS has put together, I wanted to remind people that on Wildhead's Legion Survival Guide, we have a giveaway option at the end, and we have a bunch of trading card items such as the Tabard of Flame, the Ogre Pinata, um, Rocket Chickens, lots of trading card loot that's available on both US and EU regions uh, for winners. And mm -hmm. it's very simple. You just leave a comment on the post linking to um, like a Wowhead article or database thing saying what you're most excited about um, in the patch. And I just want to thank everyone. I think our last, these posts always do well, but I think on the last giveaway we had something like 800 entries and oh, wow. we're at we're at like 2,300 for the 735 giveaway. So oh, thank wow. you everyone for you know sharing and reading this post and commenting. It's it's really awesome to see all the engagement on it. I, I was just gonna copy paste the link, but then I see that SAS is right on it. Thank yeah. you, SAS. Yes. <laughs> always on time with things. Uh, but yeah, you can check out that link if you want to know. Uh, so that giveaway is separate from the one that's going on in the chat right now. So the one yeah. in the chat right now is when you type game time uh, and you can win <laughs> game time <laughs> and the the link one is the one that uh, has um, different uh, like multiple um, yeah prizes, there's actually, like, like TCG 10, items prizes. yeah yeah so and that runs worth through Tuesday out. the 23rd so if you're taking a few days off you can still enter and not worry that you missed it because you weren't playing um, day one mm -hmm. um, so um, some of the questions SAS has passed on, we ended up getting to some of them were people asking us to, you know, tank is 2566 was like, hey, are you going to cover the low level transmogging? And we did. Um, mm -hmm. So let's see. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, I saw some people question, uh, yeah. asking about the uh, HP, uh, the, you know, the increased yeah. HP thing. Exactly. We did we mention that as well. That. Yeah, uh, I'll repeat it again in case you missed it because it was kind of mentioned with a lot of other things. Uh, so yes, the raid bosses have been confirmed to be uh, inflated. They are a lot higher than was intended. Um, so Blizzard has come out and said that there will be a fix for that, which will probably be a part of this longer maintenance that we have on Friday. Yeah. Uh, so or Saturday for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a few, um, Gnome Kicker 69 asked a few questions I can address pretty quickly. Um, any changes to mastery to work at lower level or does it still kick in at higher levels? Um, we've actually been revamping Wildhead leveling guides to take note of all the level changes and mastery, um, is still unchanged at high levels. Um, and he also asked about crafted gear. Is it scaling up or dead in the water now? And it's actually a good question because... I'm not sure about that, actually. I just know that they changed the reagents um, for enchanting. Um, let That's me see question. if I can... Yeah. Let's see. What's the name of... Okay, let me type in... Let's see. Mithril. Yeah, there, there is a Mithril blacksmith, blacksmithing set, right? Mm -hmm. let, me, uh, let me see what comes up. Okay, so I'm going to the Mithril Quaff blacksmithing page. Mm-hmm. And I don't see any little slider on the page, so I, I think it's at certain levels. Um, I think it's still stuck at certain levels at this point. Um, normally, okay. if I go to yeah. the Wowhead page and there's a little level slider, like you see on an heirloom page, it means that it scales, but I don't see that on these crafted pages. Okay, so at the moment, it doesn't seem like that, at least. 
Yeah, so it's just, you know, you can still craft something and then your level one could equip, your level one could transmog to the helm that requires, you know, 40 um, to equip. Mm -hmm. So it's still good for transmog purposes mm -hmm. for crafting. Um, uh, in terms of transmog, uh, I do want to make a note that if you uh, if you want to uh, transmog into something that's a, a lot higher level than you, so if you're a level 1, you have a bank character and you want to transmog into something that's, say, level 50 or 60, um, I unless I'm mistaken, I still think that you have to first learn the transmog on a character that can learn it. Yep. That, that can equip it so exactly. uh, if you have a bank alt on a random server um that has a lot of gold um be careful <laughs> before you buy yeah, like a level don't 60 buy tier three uh on the, yeah. off the black auction house at a level one <laughs> uh, actually that actually works um, oh okay. it's that's um that's a uh, i think it's because when you get it it's instantly yeah, soul bound i see yeah. Uh, I think that's why because that's uh that's how i got a lot of my tier three pieces um so you can actually be on a level one and win an auction on the black marked auction house, and your character will learn it as as long as it's the it's the right like um you know um type of gear like a cloth user for cloth gear, um but like a regular auction house if you buy something that's level sixty uh, you have to actually equip it to learn it so uh, that that wouldn't work because you can't equip it so. Uh, I mean, I guess what you could uh, do is uh, make a different character, which is higher level, uh, like a trial character or something, send it there and then learn it. Um, but ju just so you're aware, you, you have to actually learn the transmog before you can use it. Yeah. Tank G is 2566 had a question about the Karaji mounts. Uh, they were asking, is the mount text legendary orange like the old one or regular epic purple? So this is interesting because you automatically learn it and it's just a spell in your mount. There's no actual like linkable orange or um, purple item. Uh, so currently it has no special text. It's just, you know, beige spell text. Uh, not very exciting there. Um, this is a kind of a creative one. Um, Jay the Bard says, we have seen some of the mounts for the allied races. What do you think is going to be the mount for the Dark Iron Dwarves? Oh, so I think it would be cool if there is, was a core hound because of their history with, you know, Ragnaros and having to work for him and their proximity to Molten Core and how their city is, did their city let you enter Molten Core and was required for all the attunements back in the day? Hmm. So, so I think you don't think it would be a ram? Oh, that could be cool. Like a little lava ram. That might be interesting. Hmm. Yeah, that's a really I good question. I, I never thought about yeah. that. Oh, also, apparently, Jay the Bard has also won our game time prize, so congrats oh, really? to him. Congratulations. Yeah, <laughs> um, Chris ADM has asked, do we have any info on the release time for the Silithus quests? We have no idea. Blizzard's been very secretive about the PTR. They even took the PTR down for almost a week before... Oh, yeah. Like we yeah. couldn't test anything. It was it was very different. Um, my guess is that I would say definitely for a few weeks leading up to things. I don't think it will be as involved in something like insurrection with the Nightborn, but um, I definitely think we're going to get a kind of meaty story because we have a long way to go from fighting over Azerite to doing things with our artifact weapons um, later in seven three five. Mm-hmm. Or maybe we won't even get them every week if Blizzard really wants to stagger things out. We'll see. Yeah, might come slowly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think it would make sense for dwarves to have horses. So don't, don't fret. Yeah, that'd be weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, Lone Samurai One asked, what are you guys looking forward to the most between now and the 8.0 pre-patch? Whew. Um... Like something to be live in the game or just in general? Like more information general, on like, allied races. I, I really yeah. want to know how the... Uh, so there's two allied races now that we don't know much about. And I... Uh, like like the mount for the... Uh, um, dark Iron. I almost said Draenei. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> Dark Iron Dwarves, for example. Uh, I think information on the, the remaining two allied races would be really interesting. Yeah. Um, so, what else could I be looking forward to? I'm excited about the transmog change that went 
live this week how the level ones can uh, transmog to the level 60 appearances. Mm -hmm. And I would like to learn more about the Void Elf and Nightborn story. I'm not sure if looking forward is the right word because I'm still sad, even though I understand why the Nightborn are part of the Horde. Mm -hmm. But I would really like to see that story unfold and... Mm -hmm maybe learn more about how the Windrunner sisters are interacting with each other and if anything is planned mm -hmm. uh, for them now that Ilaria is back. I've had some feedback from people being upset about how, like, we only express being kind of sad that the Nightborn couldn't, oh. you know, be with us. Uh, yeah. But from, from a Horde perspective, you know, I'll be excited for you. I, I think it's uh, it's pretty awesome that you guys get the Nightborn, and I think uh, that, in a way, uh, you guys do do deserve it for being more open uh, to taking them in so there a little bit yeah. of positivity for the horde <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, I love my Zand oh speaking of zandalari um the zandalari trolls i'm really curious uh, about how the reputation is going to be for that um because yeah. um i don't know if you have looked into it at all Percum. do you know anything about this because i'm um so my old zandalari reputation i was very silly and i never maxed it out do you think that reputation would come back? So my guess is that um, Dark Iron and Zandalari, uh, the Blizzard uh, site says, as heroes of the Alliance adventure through Kul Tiras, they can recruit the Dark Iron Dwarves. In Zandalar, champions of the Horde can convince the Zandalari trolls to join them. So my guess is that maybe we'll have to do the full Kul Tiras and Zandalar stories to recruit... Um, those races, or there will be some battle for Azeroth reputation that is required. And I'm sure mm. those reputations will have throwback items to like OZG or maybe Molten Core or Thorium Brotherhood, but I don't think um, you'll have to have, you know, old school ZG rep to get no. the Zandalari. Yeah, I, I think they would have probably their own reputation. I'm just wondering if the old reputation would, in some way, one way or another, be back. Um, I think as, as I, a completionist, it, cool it bothers me like, that it's not max yeah. for me. <laughs> It would be cool if there's an Easter egg, like, if yeah. you could get rep, or if you have a certain level, they're like, yeah, like, you know, thanks for believing in us back in the day, like, sorry we were mean to everyone in Cataclysm, <laughs> but we're back, and like, you know, you always believed in us, you're one of our, you know, original fans. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll see. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, of course, it's not going to be the exact same uh, reputation. That would not make sense if they would have the same reputation. Uh, but it, it was just like, it was just a note. Like, it just reminded me of the old Zandalari Larry reputation. And, um... Also, on a positive note, I am really happy that the Zandalari are coming back and joining the Horde because it was like, we were really cool with them in ZG and they were like very easygoing and fun. And then they got all hostile and angry. So I, I'm happy that they're now friends with some, you know, playable uh, factions again, even though, you know, they're for the Horde and not Alliance in the Horde, <laughs> like in Classic WoW. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm happy not everyone hates them now. <laughs> Do you think al allied race mounts will be unlocked when you unlock the race? Uh, well, I think just like the other racial mounts, it'll be available automatically on that character that you play of that race, right? Yeah. I think that would make most sense. Yeah, currently the achievements... Um, for each, um, for like creating the race and being level 20, say the reward is the mount. And I believe on Twitter, Muffin has confirmed that um, they were, you know, locked to Alliance and Horde, but among mm -hmm. that faction, they were um, account wide to anyone um, who, you know, any other characters that played Alliance or Horde. Um, Skippa TV says, Will Shendalar visit Suramar and will the reputation be available once again? I think that might be an interesting Easter egg. I don't think Blizzard will. Um, you know, at Shendralar, Shendral like, uh, the ZG reputation, but as someone that, you know, was exalted with Shendralar back in the day and has the achievement, I would love to see more of them, uh, because they had a really interesting story before Cataclysm and, like, tons of ins and outs and Librams and cool library books and a bunch of interesting lore, and some of that got lost when they streamlined, um, mm -hmm. Dire World. So, I would, like, I would love to see more, but I'm not holding my breath. Um... So, New Badness yeah. says, have we found that the level 60 gear at level 1 is a deliberate change or is it a mistake that will be fixed? Um, I mean, it's unofficial. Wait, could you repeat that? Sorry. Spandius um, I... says that is the transmog changes uh, with the level bands, is that intended oh. or is it going to be fixed? Okay. Um, I think it's intended because it lines up really well with uh, the questing experience and yeah. all those rewards now scale. So, like, 
instead of saying, okay, I'm going to the level 50 zone and I'm looting the level 50 chest, you could go to that zone at, you know, level 10 and then it's your level 10 chest. So it would, be, it would get really confusing for transmog if yeah. um, they had all those restrictions in place. Yeah, I think it's something that sort of um, came, uh, um, I guess, nat naturally from the other yeah. uh, more core changes to how the looting works. Um, yep. So I, I don't think they would change it. I think it would probably be complicated to change it. It seems like they've changed how the um, how the looting and gear actually works in the game, which is probably why there's so many, uh, well, not so many issues, but probably why they also need some more maintenance because th these changes that happened in the last patch are actually pretty big deals. Yeah. They change uh, how the how the gear system works in many ways, uh, which oh uh, another little extra point for people who may have been around when it happened. So yesterday for some hours there were um, some specific dungeons that were starting to drop loot that is supposed to nowadays be unobtainable. Well, it is now unobtainable. Yeah. Uh, so again. what happened was um, you could go into, for example, Shadowfen Keep. Um, or Zulfarak, and you would get uh, loot from these older dungeons uh, for um, with gear drops that haven't been available for years. Uh, so in Zulfarak, I think I, I think Zulfarak is like the easy one to understand. Uh, Zulfarak is meant to be like what is it around level forty? Uh, yeah. The, the trolls there are around level forty, and because it scales up, that means if you are in a level sixty character or higher, uh, all the mobs turn into level sixty. So all the trash there. What's what happened was they started dropping um, gear uh, from uh, level sixty instead of level forty, which ended up up being a similar loot table as the old CG. So people were getting the uh, the old rep CG. Tokens. Yeah, like rep tokens yeah. and similar. Uh, and this was going on for some hours and a lot of people were streaming this as well. Um, and then suddenly there was uh, information on Blizzard actually hotfixing it. So that was no longer possible. Uh, yeah, like old Scalamans and a bunch of other stuff were like suddenly available for a short few hours. Um, and um, uh, there, there's rumors that they, they are going to remove the items that people got, uh, but so far, as far as I know, the people who did get the items still kept them. Uh, I mean, with the uh, the rep tokens, um, what are they called? Bijus? I'm not sure how to... Yeah, use... the, the Zandalori Bijus. I mean, like, okay. they're harmless. Like, you know, yeah. you, you can't was... really... You can't really get anything with them. No, anymore. because the like, altars don't even oh. exist, so you can't use them. Yeah. Uh, but those items, for example, even before the hotfix, if you logged out, they would be gone from your bags. Uh, so the workaround with that was that people put it in their banks. Uh, and when you put it in the bank, they would not disappear. Um, so, uh, yeah, th there's, uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure about whether items have been uh, removed uh, or not, like specific gear items, I mean, but uh, I guess we'll see. Yeah, um, if there was ever some confusion, I could probably message Blizzard or see if GMs have any statements. But um, yeah, just another example of how how things are kind of buggy um, leading up to things. Mm -hmm. um, I really think these and, kind of uh, like yeah. bugs or whatever, because uh, they're not. Well, I guess it's a bug. Uh, the it's very like interesting... unintended yeah, behavior. Exactly, yeah. it's unintended, but it makes complete sense of why it happens. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I that, that was an interesting there... experience. Yeah, I think we're about done with questions. Uh, okay, actually, um, just and the giveaway is done too. Yeah, giveaway is done, and um, yeah, um, keep an eye on Wowhead for more guides. Um, the patch was kind of sprung on us without notice, but we are really working hard on a bunch of guides related to seven three five with mm -hmm. leveling and um, zone overviews, and I'm sure we'll be talking about that more um, next week. Also. You can let um, me know or let Wowhead's Discord know if there's any sort of guide topics or news articles you would like the Wowhead staff to make, and we will do our best to try to make that happen for you guys. Yeah, and uh, the uh, a few things that you can expect probably in the near future is unfolding of the Una story and... Uh, what else? I'm like scrolling through to see the things that... Older Time Walking. Older Time Walking, the Call of the Scarab Lord Holiday, uh, Trial of Style Holiday, and the new BG, hopefully in the near future. Yeah. Those are things to things that we can expect in the near future. And Wowhead, of course, always make sure to uh, write on it as soon as they know, or as soon as we know. See, I'm a part yeah. of Wowhead now. Yeah, oh, <laughs> as soon as we know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, those are the things you can look out for. 
But yeah, yeah. I, I feel like it's weird. Like, are we really done with everything? Like, there's so much to I talk know. about. I know, I feel like as soon as we'll stop, we'll be like, Uda has been solved. <laughs> yeah, Perk yeah, actually mentioned, Perk actually mentioned, like, by the way, like, it might happen in the middle of the podcast. And I was like, yeah, that's cool, that's cool. Just just let, it, let me know. But it seems like yeah. not yet. But it could happen like five yeah. minutes after. Who it knows? It seems that they're on the very, I think that there's 12 steps and mm-hmm. they're on the 11th step Ooh. or something like that. Yeah. So uh, they could be close. Um, and yeah, definitely check them out if you want to get your own Una. It's not totally solved yet, but if you take her around, she gets a little crown on her head and a wand mm-hmm. and a stuffed animal. So... Mm -hmm. You know, it's already something positive. You're making her be happy, at least. Yeah. And uh, even if the secret is not solved, you might as well go and pick it up already. Uh, Since the drop rate has been uh, uh, increased. (laughs) I can't speak today. It's like I'm forgetting words. Uh, Then, uh, yeah, you could do that as well. Cool. But yeah, so um, in that case... uh, Quick repetition. There's a giveaway going on on Wowhead's website. uh, If SAS... uh, uh, is around he will probably link it again uh, the prizes are different TCG items and um, yeah you can expect us to come back in a week from now so 2 p.m. Pacific and uh, let's see 11 p.m. Central European time yep and Actually, 5 p.m. Eastern that's it that's it yeah there's so many time zones uh, so we'll be back again uh, pretty much same time then next week and uh, yeah, thank you guys for hanging out and watching and supporting all the all the new subscribers, all the gifted subscribers, uh, everyone taking part in the chat and asking questions and you know engaging and everything. Um, and um, I also want to thank the people who are subbed on the Wowhead. Um, what's it called? I think I had the Wowhead Premium. Wowhead Premium, like, that's it. Yeah. See, I'm telling you, I'm forgetting all the words today. Uh, the Wowhead Premium <laughs> the Wowhead Premium subscription, uh, for those of you guys who are subbed over there, thank you guys as well. If you don't know about Wowhead Premium, it's a subscription uh, that removes all the ads for you and gives you like a special color when you're writing in the forums. And there's a few other perks as well. You can check it out. And uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I'll so, see you guys. Or we will see you guys. Yeah. Again we'll next week. All sorts of 735 surprises for next week. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully some of these bugs will be fixed. And hopefully we'll know more about allied races. But I'm not holding my breath. But hopefully we'll get Una and bugs being fixed. And maybe more Silithus quests. Mm-hmm. And so. yeah, Wowhead Premium is uh, no more than a dollar a month. And I think if you if you sub for like multiple months in a row, it's even less it's than a dollar. Yeah. 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 Or $7 sure. per year. Look at that. Chat is helping me. Thank you, guys. <laughs> or was it $9? So Maybe it was $9. It's, yeah, it's, it's nine. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it was nine. It's yeah. very cheap. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching, and we will see you guys next week. Yep. Thanks. Same time, same place. Yeah. Hopefully, I didn't forget anything that I wanted to say. I think that was no, it. You did great. You're doing an awesome job. <laughs> Thank you, Perculia, for joining us and for giving us all the details of everything. And Thank uh, you, Annie, for hosting. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And we'll see you guys next week. Yep. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone. And let's see if I can do the outro scene with no fail. There we go. I think we got it. Bye-bye, guys. I'll see you next Bye. time.